All right, here we go. We got another rumor. This one's coming out about Braxton Barrios. The Jets want to retain him. He wants to come back. Will the money be an issue? J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! All right, guys, welcome in. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Today's topic of discussion is going to be one Braxton Barrios. And should the Jets wind up re-signing him? I know a lot of Jet fans are all on board with this, but we started hearing a few rumors over the course of Senior Bowl week with agents talking to one another, teams talking to one another. Uh, and we're starting to hear some rumblings that agents would be surprised if Braxton Barrios did not try to get top-end slot money, uh, which is kind of a jarring difference in, in, in money that I was kind of thinking he was going to go for. I was thinking top returner, fourth or fifth option on the, on the offense, and you were looking somewhere around five to six million dollars a year. Well, it comes out that it seems like he might be looking for nine million dollars a year. And that's where a lot of Jet fans are kind of like, sticker shock, <laughs> what do we do? Oh man, this is, this is way more than I was planning on spending. Because in a hard cap sport, you have to look at your salary cap and you have to find the best value for the production you're getting from the player on the field. It's just how the game works. It's why the rookie salary cap is so important and why you want to take a premium position that you would normally pay 20 plus million dollars a year early in the draft so that way you could benefit from that value there. So we're talking Braxton Barrios and this is a tough discussion to have because he seems like he's very close with Zach Wilson. They have obvious chemistry on the field. The fans love this guy. He fights you know so hard in a season that was lost. It looked like he had more effort. I shouldn't say more effort than a lot of guys because a lot of guys put in a lot of really good effort. But like on the offensive side of the ball, when we were losing wide receivers and tight ends weren't catching the ball and we were down to like our third and fourth string running back, Barrios seemed to be like the guy that we could rely on. He was always healthy. Uh, and it's something that I think needs to be considered in this discussion. Now, things to consider. We brought in Keelan Cole last year for about $5 million, $5.5 million, if I remember correctly. He was coming off a season, 55 receptions, 642 yards, and five touchdowns. Cole Beasley, when he signed with the Bills, was coming off a year of 65 receptions, 672 yards, and three touchdowns. Braxton Barrios this past year, 46 receptions, 431 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, that is a little bit deceiving because you have to determine what Braxton Barrios is to your team. Because initially... Coming into the season, you're thinking he's just a returner. The wide receivers, you're like pecking order that you're looking at. You wanted Corey Davis one, Denzel, Mim or uh, well, you wanted Denzel Mims two. Uh, you want to have an Elijah Moore two. You have Jameson Crowder, and then you have like the tight ends that you're hoping to get around and everything. I, I don't know. There's what's your plan for Braxton Barris? Is he a returner? Is he a fourth string wide receiver? Is he a special teams player? and, you know, your slot, or, you know, how, how are you going to go? It really depends how you want to focus your money and focus the direction of your offense. Going into the season, I expected to see more tight end plays and, and 12 personnel heavy run formations, and you didn't really get that because of our lack of tight end depth, so I do think that is the direction the Jets are probably going to want to go. Um, I think a lot of us expect us to go after maybe Trey McBride or Dalton Schultz or someone along those lines to, to beef up that room. And then you're looking at your wide receiver. So you already have Corey Davis going into next year. You have Elijah Moore going into next year. Uh, Keelan Cole and Jameson Crowder are likely leaving via free agency. So you do have that third receiver, potentially fourth receiver, if you can add a big time guy in uh, free agency or the draft. I think a lot of us are hoping to, to go that route. So realistically, do you see Barrios as your starting caliber slot? Because he didn't have a ton of snaps this season when you look at the overall course. I think he had like three or 400 snaps, and a lot of guys are playing, you know, way more than that. So with an increased role, could you wind up seeing him achieve the results you would like to see him achieve for a $9 million price tag? Because I'm not going to lie, if you're planning to use Barrios as your fourth or fifth option and pay him $9 million you're out of your friggin' mind. <laughs> there is no reasonable way you could do that. So what option does he become on your team? Are you looking to target a tight end prior to getting to your fourth or fifth wide receiver? I think uh, a lot of us would probably consider that. I, when I'm looking at my pecking order, realistically going into next year, I would like Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, uh, a top tight end, Michael Carter, a free agent or number one wide receiver that we bring in in the draft to be the first targets that I really go after uh, or at least go through in my progressions. Um, so where does that leave Braxton Barrios? Because 
are you saying you're going to pay $9 million for like your sixth option? That seems kind of silly. Or is he going to wind up being a starting slot? Because if you're going to increase his workload and you think you're going to get more from him over the course of his career, then I think you do it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Look, if Braxton Barrios is worth $9 million, he should absolutely go for that amount of money. It, everything's a negotiation. J Joe Douglas is probably going to start low. He's going to start high and you're going to meet somewhere in the middle. I really hope he comes back. I'm a little concerned because Jameson Crowder was supposed to be, I think it was a $9 million price tag going into last season. And Joe Douglas basically said, hey, you're taking $5 million or you're out the door. And Jameson Crowder wound up coming down to $5 million. So in my mind, I'm thinking that's probably the price tag he wants to keep Barrios around. Uh, now, this speculation, its it, that's what it is. It's all speculation. It's agents talking to one another. Oh, I'm surprised he wouldn't ask for top slot money. Maybe he doesn't even, like, maybe that's not even on his radar. I would think he'd want as much money as possible, realistically, but I don't know. I, it's not coming from him. I don't know whether to believe it or not. I'm hoping that's really not the case. I want to keep him around for a long time, but again, I don't necessarily want him to be, like, a primary option uh, unless he's just operating out of the slot. But I don't know. You guys let me know what you would prefer to do with Braxton Barrios. Do you want to retain him for $9 million? Do you think he's worth some other monetary amount. Am I crazy for thinking 9 million might be too much for a fifth option on an offense? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, go Jets. Jets!